Hello again. So this time we are going to explore Tai Chi Chuan. So what is Tai Chi? Literally speaking, Tai Chi is the name given to the yin and yang symbol. In Chinese medicine, martial arts and culture, there is a clearly defined theory of yin and yang. As most people know, yin and yang are symbolic of the eternal opposites that hold within each other elements of their opposite and are in a constant state of flux. Traditionally, it's symbolized by the sunny side of the mountain and the shady side of the mountain. This symbol represents the supreme ultimate. Tai Chi Chuan is a martial art that is centered around this theory and that is why the translation of Tai Chi Chuan is supreme ultimate fist. In Chinese culture, it refers to the balance of yin and yang, not that it is the ultimate martial art. Unfortunately, that's a Western misunderstanding. It is believed that Tai Chi Chuan has been known by many other names, such as Long Fist and Long River Boxing. We can leave it to the academics to argue about the names. The name is not important, but the symbolism can be. Tai Chi Chuan, like a river, should be flowing and continuous. And just like a river, what is apparent on the surface doesn't necessarily reveal what is hidden beneath. Tai Chi Chuan is the most practiced martial art in the world. The only problem with this statement is that the vast majority of people who do Tai Chi Chuan don't actually practice it as a martial art. And if you don't practice it as a martial art and you don't do the necessary training, then you're learning Tai Chi Chuan aesthetically. Therefore, don't expect to be able to use it as a martial art or for fighting. However, it is probably the only martial art that can be practiced entirely as a calisthenic. The health benefits are substantial from such apparently gentle exercise and therefore to practice the art for health is not a bad idea and recent studies confirm this. Other martial arts whilst also having a calisthenic quality also regularly teach the martial applications and the practice of fighting along with their physical training. This doesn't have to be the case with Tai Chi Chuan. Consequently, it comes in for some heavy criticism from some in the martial arts community, which is not at all surprising. Nonetheless, there are those practitioners of Tai Chi Chuan that do train for its martial qualities. Though, does it really matter? Some people do it for health, other people do it as a martial art. Does it make much difference? Let me put this into some kind of real world perspective that is easier to understand. Think about it like this. In the year 2020, there were 1.42 billion motor vehicles in use in the world. Of the people using these vehicles, only a tiny fraction were using them for racing in a professional sense. The racing driver or rider is the pinnacle of driving skill. To reach the pinnacle of martial skill is exactly what all martial artists, serious martial artists, want to achieve. Martial practitioners of Tai Chi Chuan are no different. So the vast majority of people watching this video who can drive do so but only for day-to-day -day work or casual use. Welcome to the world of most practitioners of Tai Chi Chuan, where most people practice for health or esoteric reasons. Yet, if you incorporate the training elements necessary to use Tai Chi Chuan for fighting, then you will be learning the whole art. You must expect some hard work, plenty of bruises, the odd cut lip, possible other injuries too. But it's worth the effort. Tai Chi Chuan, no matter what your reason for doing it, is much harder work than anyone might believe. Until they try it, they'll never know. Plus it also takes longer to learn than most other external arts. So why is that? Well, Tai Chi Chuan is known as an internal martial art. 
and like all internal arts, is governed by complex principles. There are a number of different styles of Tai Chi Chuan, but these are merely differences in appearance, not fundamentally different. Understanding the principles is achieved through physical practice and body mechanics, leading to positive muscle memory and physical understanding. After some experience, the theoretical aspects help to cement these understandings into true knowledge. These principles are about more than just movement. They seek to help the practitioner put their whole being into balance and motion. So that way, the body moves as a complete unit, has firm and stable structure, and is relaxed, while at the same time grounded, allowing the free flow of the body's power. In order to master Tai Chi Chuan, there are 12 principles which must be attained. On top of that, in order to learn the martial aspects, it's necessary to acquire fighting skill through various techniques of training, such as push hands, practicing applications of the techniques, and various types of sparring, including full contact sparring. To accomplish this, it's not only beneficial but essential to train with a worthy opponent. Your worthy opponent is your training partner at around the same level of ability as you. They are your martial brother or sister, and they are gold dust. Their resistance to your getting the better of them, like your resistance to them getting the better of you, is every bit as important to your progress as what your teacher has to teach you. They are the hammer to your raw steel and vice versa. Your aspiration is the fire and the art being the anvil. Training with a worthy opponent bonds you in blood, sweat, tears and aspiration as you both forge yourselves into martial artists. Trust me, it's a tough and challenging road but also a very rewarding one. The internal arts require a greater level of understanding than one might expect which is one reason why they take longer to learn. So there is more to Tai Chi Chuan than meets the eye. Just to be clear, we are all human beings, limited by all the same conditions or constraints. Between the various martial arts, we have more that unites us than divides us. And like any sport or combat art, to learn Tai Chi Chuan as a martial art takes patience, many hours of daily practice and a worthy opponent to train with on the path to learning everything you need to use Tai Chi Chuan effectively. Remember, Tai Chi Chuan is a martial art that is centered around yin and yang, the Tai Chi. Hence the translation of Tai Chi Chuan is supreme ultimate fist, referring to the balance of yin and yang and not that it is the ultimate martial art. It's not what you do, but how you do it. Good luck with your training. Thank you.